So moving on to then bullet point four, um, which was a particular issue that I thought I should raise, which is the prospect of uh, other land owned by Maori uh, being able to be developed. That's in addition to uh, the provision to allow uh, Maori reserved land to be developed. This was an issue that has been raised by Naitahu. Um, the provision at the moment in uh, LERP and in the regional policy statement is to allow development of Maori reserve land. So this development could be in the form of residential and to some degree commercial and other forms of activities. Um, but the suggestion is that uh, that then be extended to other Maori land. The proposed response to that is that um, we've included it as an issue for consideration um, on page 6 and page 14 we've added that in under 3.4.1.1 um, and 3.5.2.3 but that's it's probably a matter that is better dealt with at stage 2 particularly in the Tangata Whenua and uh, Papakainga housing chapter where we've, we're going to have a, a specific chapter in stage 2 um, to uh, look at issues in more detail and it would be, I think, in working through that chapter with uh, Naitahu uh, that we could develop this further and decide on an appropriate policy approach. Go and meet with Naitahu on some housing issues. <laughs> um, uh, the, the first one of um, Maori reserves being used, yes. is that um, a kind of communal ownership structure or is it... Is that being used for housing? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, well, a lot of it is being used for housing, but there may be, um, and my understanding is, there is the desire for more housing. Mm, yes. um, yeah. but, also, but not just for housing, it's also for um, potentially some commercial and other activities. In terms of the use of Maori reserve land, can you use your microphone? That makes it easier. Under the Resource Management Act, you know, we're we're required to um, you know, give give um, uh, credence to you know historic heritage, relation you know, ancestral lands and things. So, and we seem. You know, if we're, we're starting to talk to, to Naitahu about using Maori reserved lands for housing, we're probably sort of coming up against some fairly strong arguments in the Resource Management Act and the six, Section 6 and 7, aren't we? The, the Maori reserve land is land that was uh, legally allocated to Maori um, not as reserve as, as, as might be commonly used, as in you know, green parks and, and so forth. It was actually for... Uh, Maori to use. So, in terms of living there, uh, working there, um, and so forth. So, uh, really, what is being proposed here, and this, as I said, comes directly through from directions that are also in uh, the Land Use Recovery Plan and now in Chapter 6 of the Regional Policy Statement as well, which is that that sort of development should be allowed on Maori reserve land. So, uh, my interpretation is that we're completely consistent both with the Act and with um, those higher order statutory documents. And this is not new. This, this is also in our current operative plan. But what Pete is talking about is some additional land other than Māori reserve land. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> That's the complication when we start talking yes, about what, yes. is Maori, what, is, what is Māori land what is Maori land that they can do with of their own accord, and we start to get into these issues of ownership and, and the right. how far the iwi's got control over it, and when, when then you start to get the resource management provisions coming in, it's it's a very uh, complex and tricky area to start to tread down. Yes, it is, um, and uh, I'm not sure uh, whether Natahu have thought through exactly where they want to go with this, 
Um, it was an issue that they've raised with us and obviously want to have further dialogue with the council yeah. on this. Yeah. Um, and that's why the suggestion is that the response here is not to put a, any policy direction about uh, what is to happen to uh, Maori-owned land that is not Maori Reserve, but that we actually work through with Naitahu what, what they're looking to do in respect of that and making decisions as part of our stage two. What, what do they mean by Māori land? Because, um, I mean, Māori reserve, I know, but do they mean land that's been designated as Māori land under the Te Ture Whenua Māori Act? Or? My impression from the discussions with um, MKT um, was that that is something that's still being clarified within Naitahu themselves as well. It's just mm. an issue that they are well, aware of. If it just means land that Naitahu owns, mm. then, yes. that, then you would have developers saying, well, how come they get one set of rules and everyone else gets something else? It does raise it's a whole... Not what it means, does it? That's right. <laughs> yes. now, I think if, if I might add to this, and I'm wondering whether this is the background to it, because this has been raised with me before by um, representatives of MKT and Naitahu, is, for example... The land at Rapaki that was affected by rock roll and boulder roll, yep. um, and some of some other land that's been affected by some of the natural hazards that will be coming through to you in the chapter. They want to ensure that they have sufficient land still for further growth mm -hmm. for their people. That's one issue. And for uh, for example, another issue is out at Onuku on the peninsula, where they're confined by a very um, steep gully, mm -hmm. and that land is now being developed. Uh, as much as it could, and they feel they need more land for um, future generations. So, potentially, that's what's behind this. Mm. Well, okay. No, no, I think, I think, I mean, that, that, that gives me an explanation that I'm entirely comfortable with. I don't think anyone would regard that as um, setting up a, one set of rules for one group and another set for another. I think that, that what that indicates is, you know, that when you've got the natural. Um, you know, sort of narrowing of the development opportunities because of yeah. the environment, you know, that I've got no problems with that, yeah. So the um, fifth bullet point, which is in relation to the council vision, uh, there was quite a bit of discussion on that previously, so I'm not sure uh, whether there's further, anything further I can add to that discussion. Well, I think we'll tease that one out. Like, I mean, we're going to go through the chapters and then, I think, come back to the strategic yep. directions. I think it's been incredibly helpful to, to, to have this conversation at the outset. But I think, I think there is... Um, it's not a vision. It's a statement about what, what our city should, um, you know, look like, feel like, and, and, and that it is easy to get around. You know, that it's, it's that kind of statement about what we're trying to achieve with the district plan review, yeah. recognising that we are also a city in transition yeah. and uh, yeah. with recovery needs that create a, an exceptional um, you know, stress on the, on the environment that mm. uh, we have, and those mm. stresses are kind of felt mm. in many different mm. places. And I think mm. some sort of articulation of that, I think, mm. would be useful. Bill? And can I just add, and particularly being in um, redevelopment and recovery um, and rebuild mode, but also it's not just like one of those trendy vision statements. We're talking, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's that, right. Yeah. That's right. And that's what I, I didn't want to... No. You know, when I sort of read that about the vision statement thing, you know, I thought... It, it, it's, it's not, they're not capturing it, and I think that's because, you know, um, we all think of vision statements as that sort of set of airy fairy things that don't really mean anything <laughs> other than they look good on your annual yeah. report. Um, and I think we want something that is of substance, and I think that will emerge from a discussion over the individual chapters. Thank you. Yes, I, I think that's a great idea. I also wonder if it's helpful to you. Um, we're happy to sort of get a few writers onto it and see if we can come up mm. with something. In a sense, it's the, it's the um, condensation of everything that's in this chapter yeah. into a statement, and that statement may be able to be used in other documents that we've discussed today. Yep. Uh, Yanni. So I thought as part of our strategy retreat that or gathering that we should think about the vision, because it's, it's really clear we have no idea what we want to be as a city going forward. Oh, so well, I wouldn't different, go that far. We've got different... No, but we do. The two different like, things. We've got so. different things happening around. The only reason that we left a blank in the long-term plan at this stage or the, or the um, annual planning process 
is because none of us like being described as a world-class boutique city. That, that's right. Actually. So, but, but the trade-offs around the things we were talking about before, localisation versus centralisation, sustainability versus the need affordability, those are the trade-offs that we need to somehow discuss with our community around what is it in terms of going forward is the city going to look and feel like. And I, I just feel like we need to do that work. It's really important. We are going to be doing so, that work, but they're two separate things. So we so are. I think the recovery are, strategy is kind of, you know, not really what I would see as being kind of the vision, and neither would the, the UDS, because the UDS was done before the earthquake, and the recovery strategy was really done to us rather than with us. So I think there is a need for a kind of a, a much better process to look at a new vision post earthquake. Yeah, but, but we've had that on the agenda since we decided that we didn't want to be called a world-class boutique city, which was what we inherited from the previous council. Um, Can I just ask, Raph, <coughs> so when you talk about affordable housing, what, what, what do you mean by that and how do you think we can actually achieve it? What, what I was talking about in relation to sustainability versus affordability was the way, the, the kind of, the way in which roads are put back and the level of repairs that are done versus the kind of modern sustainable. So we might, as, as part of our district plan, for example, we might make a minimum standard of, sustain, uh, of environmental impacts on new roads that get put in. But there's a cost to that. Um, in terms of affordable housing, I mean, I, I think income versus rent is a, is a, is a good measure. And I, I would take the quarter of, of people's income versus... Uh, what they're paying in terms of rent. Yeah, but how, how do we get that affordable housing? You can't just magic it up. No, no, no. I, mean, I, think, I think we're talking so about we might, the, the for example, generic... In the plan we might, I mean, I'd love us to, to say when we rezone land from rural to residential for private developers, they give something back to the community. There's a community benefit that should accrue from the developer getting a huge financial windfall and the city losing more of its green space. There are and processes... Part of that should come back, like yeah. what Queenstown do go back into some sort of affordable land bank where people can actually But we're housing. going to deal with that when we get do the individual chapters. So well, Queen, Vicky, Queen, Queenstown would be the most unaffordable place probably in New Zealand. Yes. Vicky? Sorry, just in terms of the... Um, in the terms the of discussion the can happen vision, afterwards. Excuse me, Vicky? The whole council vision. If, for example, the council vision were to uh, encapsulate something like uh, a place where anything is possible and innovation is valued or something like that, what would we do differently in the district plan from what we're currently doing? This is what I'm trying to avoid. That is the exactly. discussion around the long-term plan. Yeah. That's the vision exactly. for the city as a whole, as a living, breathing entity, yeah. Yeah. not yeah. as a bunch of no, no, rules about what right. can happen no, where. No, but I completely understand that. Mm. I completely understand that. But just if we were to focus on this as part of our overall vision... Would we do anything differently in the district plan than what you're currently recommending? I think it would be a matter of emphasis. If, if um, certain aspects, say, and this is just an example, if economic growth became the priority of the city, and I'll just use this as an example, then obviously uh, you could achieve that by a number of mechanisms. You could... Um, allow business development anywhere in the city, for example. Again, it's, it's, it's an off-the-wall example. But that might be one way that um, you might encourage economic growth. The issue becomes, obviously, for the city, how far do you want to go in that direction as compared to some of the um, implications of going, moving in that direction? Mm. Um, there is usually a trade-off in virtually all the planning issues that are discussed both in this chapter and the other chapters. And so it becomes a matter of where you want to um, sit, where the city wants to sit in terms of those trade-offs. We are in the range of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, if we wanted to focus on encouraging innovation and um, people doing things and thinking that if you came to Christchurch you could almost anything was possible here, what would we do differently in the district plan? I appreciate that a lot of it's in the annual plan. What would, would we do anything differently in the district plan than what we are currently doing? Well, it, I think, again, my reply is yes, it's, it's those things like where you allow activities, 
what sorts of controls you have on activities. It would be changing those sorts of things that I could see the district plan potentially doing, because that's effectively what the, the district plan does. It says where activities can occur, it says in what circumstances they can occur. So if you wanted, using that as an example, if you wanted to progress along that way, along those lines, and that, that is a priority, then it would be those sorts of things that the district plan could change. I'm sorry, I need to add to that too. We have to understand the planning hierarchy which a district plan sits amongst. You can't, you can't ignore the statutory plans and the Resource Management Act in this. So it's not just what could we do. I mean, you can't not have a district plan. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, I, so I, if it but was, I think I think we're yeah. confusing two things, yeah, so and too. and in a way, I didn't want to yeah. go down this track for this very reason. The strategic, you know, the, the the vision statement for the city is something we need to do. Mm. We need to replace the one that was created in the past, which was a world class boutique city. That is not what Christchurch was, is, or will be. We need, to, we need to define what we are as a city, and that is emerging from a range of different conversations that we've been having mm. over the last six months. So uh, I, I want to take that offline. It's got nothing to do with this debate. This debate is about the, um, the, the, the legislative framework, really, for, it's, for it's planning. Right. And, um, and it will fit within the vision that we set. But I'm thinking that what what the, the joint group have really asked for is for that strategic um, uh, uh, vision, which is more about the look and the feel of the place and how well it connects. Yeah, that's so right. th that's, that's, that's what the district plan's about, um, you know, and, and the, you know, the, the co-location of yeah. different activities yeah. and reverse sensitivities and all of those things. But they are, that, that's about where you live, where you mm. work, where you play. And, um, and the combination thereof, but um, it's not about the, you know, the no. place where anything is possible because everything no. is not possible under a district plan. No. <laughs> to put it bluntly, one's a vision statement under the RM, you might say, and yep. the other's a vision statement under the Local Government Act, which is yeah. a lot broader. That's right. Mm. But we'll, we'll get there. I mean, mm. I, I think that there will be a statement emerge that, yeah. that brings the district plan together yeah in terms of what this council Absolutely. wants to achieve. But it's it's not a reflection of what us as individuals want to achieve. It's actually what we want for our city. Yeah. yeah. But we will get there. So um, so I think that's us done and dusted for today. And tomorrow we have um, the exciting chapters of... What do we have tomorrow? We've got... Um, transport, commercial, industrial, and the definitions and glossary. Am I right? You are right. <laughs> Very good. Oh, um, we have some more Section 32 documents here which we'll distribute before you all go, if that's all right. Yeah, that's great. Oh, Phil? Just a thought. Um, definitions down the bottom there. I just wonder if that might be a good place to start for us who don't understand all those terms. I don't know. How are you going to... Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm happy either way. If you want that first, that's fine. Yeah, would yeah, that be that's yeah. acronyms, especially? Yes. <laughs> acronyms. Oh, it doesn't cover acronyms. <laughs> sort them. You have to guess the acronyms. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you.